You're watching WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm Corey, your host, and this is the episode for the week starting May 7th, 2012. So the major theme for this week was updates, updates, updates. Being the second week of the month, it was Microsoft Patch Day and many other security vendors released their updates as well. There were updates for many Adobe products, many Microsoft products, and many Apple products. I'm not gonna go into detail on all these updates because I've published stories about all of them on the WatchGuard Security Center, so you can check them out there, but I'd like to share some highlights about these particular updates. First, early in the week, a researcher disclosed that Apple had a vulnerability having to do with uh, storing passwords in log files in clear text. Basically, the researcher found that if a OS X Snow Leopard user upgraded to OS X Lion, a flaw in the login window and in File Vault would cause it so a special debug parameter was set, which caused your passwords to be stored in a log file in clear text. This means that any user that had access to that computer could see the passwords for everybody that logs on to that computer. Later in the week, Apple released a OS X patch to fix this vulnerability, as well as 36 other ones. So if you're an OS X user, you should definitely update. Uh, Apple did also release a Safari update, which I talk about in my alert. And also, if you're an iPhone or iOS user, there's a new version of iOS 5.1.1 that fixes many vulnerabilities, including a drive-by download flaw. This week was also Microsoft Patch Day, and as usual, Microsoft released a ton of patches. Uh, they released, I believe, seven security bulletins fixing many vulnerabilities in four different products, essentially Windows, Office, the .NET Framework, and Silverlight. Again, you can read about all these updates on WatchGuard Security Center, but one key thing is this update fixes several vulnerabilities that have to do with the Dooku Advanced Persistent Threat Attack. A while back, I talked about Dooku, an advanced piece of malware that seems to come from the same authors as Stuxnet. This malware is targeting various uh, industrial organizations and big companies, especially in Europe and Asia, in different phishing attacks. And it also exploits some zero-day vulnerabilities. So if you're worried about these vulnerabilities, be sure to apply Apple's patches. Finally, I mentioned Adobe released a whole bunch of patches for their products. The most important one is an update to the Flash Player, which I mentioned last week, as well as an update to Shockwave, a, a free uh, player similar to Flash Player. However, Adobe also updated uh, various packages that come with their Creative Suite, CS55. Uh, if you use Adobe Creative Suite, you'll probably want these updates, except there's one problem. Adobe is charging for these updates. Uh, the only way you can update these products and fix the security flaws is by buying CS6. So that's a little bit of a disappointing story from Adobe. While it's okay to charge for feature updates, most people expect that you give security patches for free at least one version back for your software. One interesting and much debated story this week is FBI's recent proposal to the Communications Assistant for Law Enforcement Act. Uh, this is an act that basically helps law enforcement get wiretaps. Basically, FBI's proposal is asking private companies to put backdoors in products like Skype or Facebook or Gmail so that law enforcement agencies can then request wiretaps and gain information from these products. Uh, obviously, privacy advocates and uh, civil liberty people are against this. At the very least, there should be some sort of judicial oversight so you can't just uh, willy-nilly put a wiretap on any product. Nonetheless, it is an interesting story. The FBI is trying to push this proposal through and we'll see what happens. In other government-related cyber news, this week the Department of Homeland Security warned about increased cyber attacks against gas pipelines. Uh, according to the Department of Homeland Security, they've detected many, many phishing attacks, or they've had reports of many, many very targeted phishing attacks at different gas pipeline facilities. So if anyone out there works at these type of industrial or SCADA facilities, 
Step one is make sure these systems are offline, uh, but if they aren't, at the very least, make sure they're protected by defense in depth and they have state-of-the-art protection, such as what we offer in our multi-purpose firewall. In hacktivist-related news, a new group has made themselves known, and they call themselves The Unknown. So far, they've breached NASA and the European Space Agency, both of which have been confirmed. But there's a small twist to this story. This particular group is not attacking for malicious purposes. In fact, when they find vulnerabilities, they're actually contacting the organization and offering to share as much data as possible for these organizations to fix the flaws. While that does seem like a positive twist, do remember any sort of unauthorized access into systems is still illegal and could get you into a lot of trouble. One of my predictions for this year is that we would see more geo-aware malware, and a particular piece of malware was discovered this week that seems to confirm this prediction. WebSense, one of our partners, had an interesting blog post about this malware, and they noticed that it used geolocation to customize its social engineering techniques. But what's interesting is how the malware finds its location. Apparently, the malware ties into Foursquare, a popular social networking service, and uses that particular service to learn where it is and then customize its Itself. So this seems like further proof that attackers will continue to leverage geolocation to help their malware spread. Now the good news is malware, whether it uses geolocation or not, can be detected with many AV products, including our products. This week we also learned of a potential Twitter breach. An anonymous-related hacking group uh, released a bunch of Twitter credentials, about 55,000, on Pastebin this week. So it seemed like uh, this group was able to steal uh, both usernames and passwords of up to 55,000 users. However, as Twitter and other researchers checked these credentials, they noticed many, many duplicates, and they also noticed that the credentials seemed to belong to Twitter spam bots. So the breach does not seem as bad as it was first suspected. Nonetheless, if you're a Twitter user, you may want to change your password just to be safe. Let's finish off with some quick good news. This week news came out that the Scotland Yard arrested some members of the Team Poison hacking group. I've talked about Team Poison before. There's been various incidents where uh, they've infiltrated calls between the uh, Scotland Yard and the CIA, or they've uh, griefed or dosed the Scotland Yard call center. Well, this week news came out that the Scotland Yard arrested a 17-year-old member of the group as well as two other people. When fighting computer crime, it's often frustrating because it seems like you're battling an anonymous enemy you can never find. So it's often encouraging to see that law enforcement agencies can sometimes find these online criminals. So that's it for this episode. As usual, if you'd like more regular security stories, be sure to check out our blog, WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com, and you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept. By the way, next week I'll be attending a security conference in Australia called Ossert. I still plan on bringing you a security podcast next week, but due to the time difference, the podcast may come out a little earlier or perhaps even later in the week, but do look out for it. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.